Record violence claiming young lives. But I got this call that they took my baby. What role do gangs play? We have a small segment of youth victimizing often people who look just like themselves. As the fentanyl boom pumps millions into the underground economy and the streets are flush with stolen guns, gangbangers are using socials to recruit and send kids to commit felonies. We've seen people as young as 12 or 13, both uh, on the receiving end of violence as well as committing acts of violence. With potentially life-changing consequences, the spotlight goes underground to a world where crossed out graffiti and diss tracks send people to the moor. You could get caught in the crossfire between some of these gang conflicts. Good evening and welcome to The Spotlight. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Rose. Tonight we are taking a look at the dramatic rise in murders and shootings in our state. The numbers for 2021 are unprecedented. In King County alone, there were 88 shooting deaths. 372 people were shot and survived. And more than 1,400 shots were fired by the official tally. Now, part of that is due to gang violence. And it's a topic that's hard to cover in news. Often victims and witnesses don't want to speak out of fear or a culture of not talking to the police. Police don't want to give the gangs the street credit by saying their names publicly. And most politicians will do anything they can to avoid admitting there are gangs in their city. As our research has found, though, there is an active and deadly underworld all around us. It advertises in subtle rap lyrics, YouTube videos, TikToks, and graffiti that carries a powerful message to those who can decipher it. Take the case of James Richardson. He performed under the stage name Tana Money and left behind a broken-hearted family when he was shot in the face, gunned down in a drive-by hit on the 509 freeway. I got this call that they took my baby and I would won't hear him shaking me saying, Mom, I'm home. I can't hear that no more. I'm sleeping in this room. That's the closest thing I can get to my, to my son. Just laying in his bed, wishing he would come home. Talk on the street is that this shot from his music video of Richardson standing on a basketball hoop contributed to his murder. Richardson was affiliated with a crew from Seattle's South End, the grimy gangsta gorillas. The basketball hoop is in the territory of the New Holly Crips. That disrespect was added to a years-long beef between the groups. We're told it goes as far back as when Richardson's uncle was an OG. His music came from, came from a place, it came from his heart. You know, he rapped about his son, he rapped about his relationships, he rapped about his struggles. But that's enough these days to let the lead fly on a state highway at 8 p.m. Three members of the New Holly Crips are in jail awaiting trial for the murder. Four lives destroyed over a minor dispute. And then you have the Tucktown Kings based out of Tukwila. Here's video of them smashing a car into the West Coast Armory in Bellevue. They stole 70 guns in that heist. It's one of the major ways that criminals get cheap guns on the street. They steal them. Mills pulled up, clip sticking out. Shooter had the cake, trying to show me out. And we catch a body, then we fly him out. Making all this money that you never count. Prosecutors say they're rapping here about shooting at a rival from New Holly. They don't want to ride. I told you they don't want to ride. Nah, I told you they don't want to ride. They tried three times to kill Samuel Razine and failed, but they did manage to kill Razine's girlfriend. According to charging documents, Razine refused to help police identify his girlfriend's killers. That's how dedicated he was to the life. Cops busted Razine for shooting at a rival after his girlfriend was killed. He's doing an eight year bid now for being a felon in possession of a firearm. Razine, who has a rap sheet for pimping and drug trafficking, isn't allowed to carry a gun, much less fire one in city limits. For an overview on how the gangs are operating here now, we turned to Gabe Morales. He's a former Marine and a gang expert who served as a corrections officer at California's notorious Folsom State Prison. He worked with youth offenders in LA and he spent 25 years working at the King County Jail in Seattle. He says gangs aren't just a city issue. We've seen gang activity all the way from the Canadian border all the way down to uh, Portland area, Vancouver, uh, Clark County, as far as Western Washington. Uh, it goes all the way over into Kitsap. I did a class recently for Kitsap Ports because they're experiencing a lot more gangs as Seattle and Tacoma become more and more expensive and with gentrification, 
these gangs are spreading out from the two big metropolitan areas into all kinds of cities that you never would think they'd be active in. Originally, we had a huge influx of the California gangs, the LA Crips and Bloods. We also had a lot of the Chicago gangs come over, Gangs from Disciples in particular. I would say probably 90% of the gang members that are active today are homegrown. They're second, third generation. Some of them don't even represent, they don't even recognize authority from California to Chicago anymore. It's totally local as far as who's involved in it, who's calling the shots, shot callers they call them. The internet is something that wasn't a big thing back in the 80s and 90s, it is now. These kids can make these TikTok videos. They will show these videos and it's a recruitment tool, one of the biggest ones they use right now. So you wanna get with us, they'll show girls, fancy cars, the flash stacks of money. You, you come and join my crew and this can be you. It used to be back in the day, once you wanted to actually get in, you were beat it. Now, that has changed a lot, although some Latino gangs will still do that, the beat-ins, but a lot of them now will crime in. So, it takes a lot more commitment to commit a crime, a felony, than it does to get beat up for a few seconds. So a lot of gangs like to use that. You have to prove yourself. They'll put you up to doing something, maybe a, a marijuana rip, as, as uh, we all know. There's been a lot of robberies now recently in these marijuana shops. We have a small segment of youth that feel this is the way to go. This is the life to live. They don't see much of the future. And so they get involved in gangs, get involved in drugs, and victimizing often people who look just like themselves. Most civilians don't have to fear for that, but you could get caught in the crossfire between some of these gang conflicts. Gang shootings can pop off over graffiti because while some of it's just vandalism, other spray paintings carry a hidden meaning. The spotlight went for a ride along with Burien's police chief, Ted Bow to hear how his city is calming tensions. Graffiti can be the first area of disrespect between gangs is crossing out somebody else's graffiti, which tends to lead to an escalation in behavior. So people either defending their territory or uh, just feeling affronted by the fact that somebody crossed out their graffiti can lead to an escalating series of violence. Right up here was a double gang homicide about four years ago. And that one was directly affiliated with and tied to graffiti and vandalism. Um, they've done a really beautiful thing there, replacing a location where they had chronic issues with graffiti with a community mural. A uh, community mural is A, beautiful, but it also uh, adds that community ownership piece that makes it way less likely to be vandalized by the gang. Because now it's, it's part of the community and community pride. In City of Berrien, we have 10 or 11 different gangs that are operating. I'm not gonna mention one over the other or give any priority to one gang over the other. Just a recognition that they're all here. People don't run to the gangs, they run from something else. So one of the things with the gang is it gives you a sense of belonging. And that's really what it is that people are involved, is they belong to a culture where people fill those unmet needs. They provide safety to each other. They provide love and support to each other. So that's the needs that they're meeting within that group. And often they fund themselves through illegal activities. One of the revenue sources is the distribution of, of the fake narcotic pills or the M30s or fentanyl-based tablets. It seems like Man, your elementary school, late elementary school, fifth, sixth grade, they're starting that recruiting. We've seen people as young as 12 or 13, both uh, on the receiving end of violence as well as committing acts of violence in our community. We have to acknowledge that we don't throw away 13 year olds, right? 13 year olds, we have to find a way to get them back to being highly functional members of society. Keep up that form, keep up that form. There's a program called Badges and Barbells. We have police officers working with and coaching with the young people to work out after school. It's a relationship opportunity, a coaching opportunity, a mentoring opportunity, all those things that are Really what we're talking about here is those opportunities to develop positive nurturing relationships instead of negative relationships. Ah, de donde eres? De Guatemala? Yo soy de Venezuela. Carlos Marquez, who was one of the Badger and Barbells coaches. One of my favorite things about Carlos is he grew up in Berrien. So he grew up here, he became a community service officer here with the Berrien Police Department, and then became a detective with Berrien Police Department. So he's come kind of full circle from growing up in this community to serving the community from a law enforcement lens. and. He has this amazing ability to connect with young people because he literally was there. You, you can't say, you know, uh, you've never been here, you don't understand, when he grew up in the same apartment complex you're living in today. Como esta? Bien. También. I think it's huge when you have officers that understand culture, who officers who are part of that culture, um, because not only do they have the ability to develop the relationship with the young person, they also have the ability to 
share that culture with the other law enforcement officers. You, you'll find that people will sit around the roll call room table talking about those cultures. For instance, Ricardo Cueva is in the room, he's talking about the Spanish culture from the perspective of, I grew up in that culture, this is my understanding. And I, I think it really deepens the relationship the other officers are able to have with the community as well as uh, Officer Cueva himself. All of us are humans, whether you be an officer, whether you be a young person, uh, all too often we stereotype people into all these little boxes. And you know, I like to introduce myself first as, hey, my name's Ted, I'm a dad, I'm a husband. That, that's who we are as people. And we have to start from that place. We also have to give that, give that credit to young people. We're used to politicians who'll say anything to avoid admitting that there's a gang issue. But that's not the case with one local mayor, why she says it's a problem that has to be addressed head on she's getting results. Those are the kids that get recruited into these violent groups and I wanted our administration, uh, together with our incredible police chief, uh, I wanted us to be able to tackle that together. Welcome back to the Spotlight. Mention gangs to any political leader and they start tap dancing. But that's not the case with Everett's mayor, Cassie Franklin, and the city's top cop, Dan Templeman. You know, I think I care deeply about kids. Uh, my background is in housing and homelessness and helping homeless youth. I've seen at-risk youth struggle, and, uh, and those are the kids that get recruited into these violent groups. And I wanted to, our administration, uh, together with our incredible police chief, uh, I wanted us to be able to tackle that together. Well, talking about your background, you're a psychologist. How does that work uh, play into the issues you've seen with the kids joining gangs here in Everett? You know, the kids that get um, recruited into these uh, groups are often kids that are at risk. They don't have the stability and, and safety net that maybe other uh, kids do in their, in their homes or in their communities. And so they're just uh, vulnerable uh, to, to being caught up in that. And so when you give kids uh, uh, resources, stability, community connections, purpose, uh, meaningful pathways, uh, they don't end up um, being caught up in that. And so I think my background helped, um, helped me have a better understanding of that issue. And then again, our police chief was very committed to addressing this. Was there a specific case or some tragedy that really rocked you to your core, that, that motivated you to make this a campaign issue? Yeah, you know, I had heard directly uh, from families that had lost uh, uh, young people, and there was a, a young man who was shot and killed, uh, and he was uh, 14 years old, and he uh, by another child, and you know, you think of something like that, and and um, that just shouldn't happen in in our city. Uh, you know, we. Uh, we have the resources to, to do better by these kids. There's a particular area of town that we're familiar with, Casino Road, which has been an issue for a long time, but I haven't heard of any shootings, definitely not gang shootings, um, in the last couple of years. What did you do right to address this issue? You know, I think in uh, 2018 through 2020, we did a lot right. We uh, issued a, a mayoral directive and our team worked to uh, focus on intervention, prevention and enforcement together with uh, community partnerships. And I think that balance of, of those programs and community partnerships are what it takes to really uh, get a handle of, on this. I will correct you though, unfortunately we have seen an uptick since the pandemic in, in violent uh, crime in, in Everett. And I think that is the progress we made. We had a little bit of a setback with the, mm -hmm. with the pandemic and the rise in violent crime. Is that gang related violence though? Uh, some of it may be, yes. And why why the slip back? You can't be with the kids as much as you want it to be? Yeah, that is a huge part of it. I, you know, a police department can't do this alone. A city can't do this alone. It takes the entire community and, and all of those community partnerships. When the pandemic hit, all of those community programs that we started were in partnership with other organizations. Many of those organizations stopped their outreach work. They had to cut back, they had to close their doors. Uh, schools were closed, right? And so where are these kids going during, um, during this time? They uh, were even more vulnerable to uh, potential uh, gang recruitment. So as we come out of the pandemic, hopefully, what will you focus on to readdress some of this violence that's creeping up again? Yeah, well, clearly we need to, to continue to build and strengthen our relationships with our community. And, and we, you know, we just recently had a meeting with our Latino community out off of Casino Road area. And really what we heard from those community members was we wanna see more of you, right? Uh, we want you to engage with our youth more. 
And so that's a clear message to me as the chief as to what this community is asking for. And that's something that we're going to give them. A lot of politicians, a lot of cities, they don't want to say we have a gang problem. Why has Everett embraced this as an important public safety issue? Well, I think it's important that you, you know, the first step towards addressing any public safety issue is acknowledging that you've got, got a concern, right? That you have an issue. And I think here in Everett, you know, when we first really started looking at this issue a few years ago, you know, we'd seen notable increases in, in shootings in the city and drive-by shootings, stolen firearms. We were encountering younger and younger members of our community that were involved in some of these activities. And, and I think that as, as a police department, as a city, the first step is acknowledging that this is a public safety issue, not just a police issue, but a public safety and a community issue, and really then uh, dedicating resources towards making a difference. With the initial success that you had, even though you say there's a little, little bit of slip back, have you heard from, from other cities, other political leaders asking what you did to address this uh, violence? Actually, no. I haven't had other mayors reach out and ask us what we're doing that's working. But I was uh, engaged in a uh, uh, cohort of mayors uh, uh, talking about police reform and, and ways to connect with your community. And I got to present to that group on our community policing, our successful community policing efforts that have uh, helped us reduce violence. We've heard so from some gang experts that kids as young as 12 are being groomed already. Is that your experience? Yeah. You know, when I was uh, CEO of Cocoon House, I have, uh, and I actually now have a middle school daughter. I'm very concerned about kids in middle school and even late grade school. That is uh, the age where I think kids are most at risk. And so I th think ensuring that we have our school resource officers and these uh, programs available to specifically that population of kids, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, is uh, of utmost importance. The spotlight turns to Federal Way, where we'll meet a man who turned his life around with a pair of scissors. And now he's teaching teens how to make fast money the legal way. Whatever I can say that can help you, I got 20 plus years of story. Lamont Stiles is known around Federal Way as the guy to see if you want to line up. He tells us barbering saved his life. Now it's a skill he's passing on to the next generation to keep them on the right path. Photojournalist Michael Driver has his story. I actually had multiple situations where I saw youth and they were like, Mr. Styles, Mr. Styles, when are you gonna open up your barber school? And then like a week later, he shot up or he shot somebody. And then it just started weighing on me so much that it was like, man, you have this opportunity to pull these kids in. So I'm just gonna use that corner. You see how that works? We wanna show them that there's other ways to get money. Boom, I hit them like that and then show the value of how you can bring it your way from a skill. I know that I can teach you to do that and if the barrier is money and I'm going into the line, then we'll figure that part out. We have uh, extended scholarships to youth who maybe necessarily can't afford it and then come back here. We market to everybody. We kind of like target at-risk youth. You see how it's off? on that side and that side, you know what I'm saying? Youth that maybe don't know where they wanna go. So I wanna keep his line as natural as possible. I think he's a real genuine person. If I could still make a nice amount and I gave away a few haircuts, man, that's, that's a beautiful day. One of those people that's gonna help you as much as he can and lead you in the right direction. That's what I need right now. Whatever I can say that can help you, I got 20 plus years of stories. <laughs> stories that can help you to, to, to cultivate. If I feel like my life has no value, then I'm going to live and go out into the world as such, right? I can either be out there messing up or in here messing up and getting better from it. If I feel like my life has value and that I, can, I have something to give the world, and that's all they need. That's all they need is the ability, somebody to say, hey, you can do it. You are somebody. Don't give up. I don't want to make the wrong mistake that can put me in jail for a while when I can make the right mistake here and put me on my way to become a, a better barber and a better person within the community. If we can not just talk about wanting to see them do good, but show them and bring them in and let them be um, the architect of their own success, let's be the change that we want to see in the world. It's, we, it's not going to happen if we just expect somebody else to do it. Let us, let it start with us, the individual. There you go, bro. 
appreciate you, Lamont. Yeah, Thank definitely, you, definitely, definitely. You'd know if your kid was joining a gang, right? You sure? The signs to look for next. Maybe you're thinking, I can spot a gangbanger from a mile away. Well, Gabe Morales says, you might miss the key signs under your own roof. It used to be, you'd see 12, 15 guys standing on the corner wearing colors, throwing hand signs, and it was very obvious they were in a gang. It was actually easier to tell. It's hard to tell now because they mix and match as far as clothing styles and colors and all that. So it's more about what are they doing, the behavior symbols, markings like this in their notebooks, drawings, who they hang around with, where they're at, where they're hanging out, what are they doing after school, keep track of all that. Don't be in denial. There's a lot of parents in denial. Some of them, it's sad to say, don't seem to care. And so show that you care uh, for your child. Get some intervention. Everybody can change. I firmly believe that. There, there's, there's, there's hope for change. People can change. I've seen it. We just need to give them a little bit of assistance. And yes, a lot of it is up to them, but we gotta give more opportunities for people to succeed in this world. One of the things we always try to do on the spotlight is to tell all sides of a story. It's important to remember, like Gabe said, people can change. And while researching this topic, we had several people agree to speak on camera, only to drop out afraid for their safety. We certainly understand those concerns. If you're currently in the gang life or you have a family member who is and you want to share your story, reach out to us. That's all the time we have on this edition of The Spotlight. Until next time, be smart and stay safe.